So I'm going to try not to go into a rant. All Why? Right. What are we talking about? We're talking about varnishing your art. Oh. Yeah. Varnish. I gave up varnishing anything a long time ago. You don't varnish things. Well, I used to varnish my copper, and then I was like, no, not doing it. I don't know. I have a feeling that this video is going to have people like, meh, 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 meh. Weird. You can't understand them when they talk like that. <laughs> Rafi's Rants. Hola, you amazing artists. You guys have had a lot of questions of like, hey Rafi, how do you varnish your paintings and what do you use for varnish? Varnish is one of those things that when you look it up online, it is the most confusing thing. You got people that are like, you need to use this kind of varnish and you need to use this kind of varnish and you need to make sure that before you lay your varnish down that you have a layer in between your painting so that conservationists could take the varnish off and protect your painting or restore or whatever. So many things that you have to do as an artist just to varnish your painting. I knew varnish was such a heated topic. I never knew. It's so stupid. It is the stupidest thing ever. Before I go into this, because a lot of people are going to disagree with me. A lot of hoity-toity artists that are like, this is how you're supposed to do this. If you're a professional artist, this is how you do it. And by the way, guys, if you hear a bunch of bassy sounds, it's because the Blue Angels are doing their practice run today and we're gonna be getting all kinds of sounds coming in. So I do apologize about that, but I can't control the Blue Angels. If I could control the Blue Angels, I'd just have them doing beautiful tricks in their airplanes all day. That's what they're doing, these beautiful tricks. Well then, job well done. My job is done here. I uh, okay, so to preface this video, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's, let's just make that clear. I am not a professional on paint or varnish or materials that last forever or what even makes them work. All I know is that there's like polymer chains, oil-based chains that over time get hard and then some of them crack because they get too hard in certain surfaces. In my mind, my pieces are protected and the reason that they're protected is because of a series of experimentations that I've done. I am talking about acrylic paintings. I'm not talking about oil paintings. With oil paintings, I understand that varnishing is a huge ordeal because oil paintings after a certain time start cracking and they definitely need to be restored. People have talked about using house paints are using like store-bought brands instead of like the artist stuff because the artist stuff is so expensive so a lot of people buy the store-bought brands and then you have artists website that say those are not good enough and then you have artists that say those are not good enough and then you have other artists that say those are good enough so I use basically all materials that I could possibly use that I enjoy working with in order to get the results that I need. So when it comes to varnishes, what I'm thinking about is the way that the painting looks, and I'm also thinking about what area the painting is going to be in in order to protect it better. For some of the outdoor pieces that I've done, I've used the the latex clear coat by Rust-Oleum. Those pieces have held up really, really well. So one of the ways that I tested the materials was to uh, create this piece which hangs on our vehicle. So I figured that this would get the most extreme weather that any piece that is outside would be getting and I'm happy to say that that has been mounted on our car for the last five years and I mean it's not showing any damage or even uh, fading to the paint or yellowing or anything like that. A lot of my paintings that are on wood I'll use the polycrylic by Minwax um, that seems to work really, really well, and it holds up really, really well, whether or not you're placing the piece inside or you're placing the piece outside. For a lot of my pieces that are on canvas, I will probably use either the same thing, depending on what the piece is and where it's going to go, or I'll use the golden varnishes, the golden polymer varnishes. You could have matte, satin, or gloss finish. The same thing with the Minwax Polycrylic. You have matte, satin, gloss finish. With my acrylic paintings, for the most part, I go with a glossy surface because the gloss seems to pull out the colors that I want the most. Anybody that works with acrylics knows that you get the matte surfaces where you don't really get that, uh, that vibrancy of color. So a good rule of thumb when you're using any kind of varnish on your piece, on your acrylic piece, is to wait several days for the acrylic 
acrylic to actually dry and cure. Ideally, a lot of times they say to wait 30 days. Um, I generally wait maybe about a minimum of five days, uh, but usually I try to wait at least 10 days before I apply the varnish. When you brush it on, you don't get any weird uh, strokes. Of course, if you've watered down some of the acrylic paint that you've used underneath, um, chances are it'll move. And in that case, I've used a spray varnish instead because it'll keep the paint where it needs to be. If you do that, I do recommend using the Minwax Polycrylic Spray. Don't use a typical varnish spray because those are not non-yellowing. So yeah, if you're worried about the paint smearing as you're putting on the varnish, um, then go with the spray. Go with a good spray. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's the standard, but that works for me. And as far as like applying it on there, I just use a brush. You want to use a clean brush uh, not a brush that you've used before. I've had that happen where there might be like flecks of paint within the brush and then I'm putting on this clear and then I end up with all these little flecks of paint. You want to clean the area. There are several of my paintings that have chest hair in them that I had to pick after I varnished them. Some I did not pick so my DNA will survive. That's how they'll identify your artworks as yours. <laughs> They'll be like, look, there's a Rafi Perez chess hair in this piece. Or they'll find my hair and be like, an unknown female did this painting. Yeah, they'll find your chest hair too. <laughs> what I do recommend is that you do your own research and work with the materials that you are comfortable with. Me personally, I just work with the materials and kind of test them out myself and see what it is that I enjoy the most, what I enjoy using the most. So a lot of people are going to have a lot of different opinions based on their own experiences on what materials you should use. And the truth of the matter is, at least in my opinion, is that you have to decide for yourself what materials you want to use and why you use those materials. A lot of artists in the past have not worried about the conservation of their art. Eva Hess uh, created sculptures using latex and when somebody asked her like well that has the longevity of 20 years Eva said let the conservationists worry about that uh, Jackson Pollock used house paints famously and you know a lot of conservationists are like well you know his pieces are falling apart now a lot of the materials they use were oil-based house paints so like I don't use anything that's oil-based whether or not you're using oil-based fine art material or you're using oil-based cheap material like oil-based after a while starts to harden a little bit too much and starts flaking and chipping off even with acrylics you have one group that says they're not going to last well because of the polymer bond Bonds, and then the other group says those will last centuries. Worst case scenario in the future if my paintings are famous then a conservationist will worry about that because a lot of the artists that I respect in the past didn't worry about that stuff. They weren't all hoity-toity creating artworks and like well I need to concern myself with the conservation of my art. There was one article that I read about this where the artist that wrote the article actually said like you don't want to be remembered as Turner is remembered do you? You know all of his paintings were yellowing because of the materials that he used. So you're talking about the famous artist Turner? Shoot I'd love to be remembered like Turner. Are you freaking insane? Create what you want to create. If you're going to put a varnish on your pieces because you want to protect your pieces for now or it makes the piece look even better then absolutely varnish your pieces. Picasso was one of the first artists thought to use house paint because it hid the brush strokes. Obviously Jackson Pollock, Eva Hess used materials that she wasn't. Matisse did cutouts out of construction paper. There was no thought of conservation there whatsoever and most of the argument that's going on on the internet about what varnishes to use has to do with the longevity of the material. Yeah, keep in mind that the works of Picasso uh, and the other artists of that era went through a war. A lot of these paintings were like stored in salt mines. Your paintings may not suffer as much as a lot of those war era paintings did. A lot of the bigger arguments that you get are from the actual art supply places that say like that is not going to last that is not designed for that and it's true a lot of those materials are not designed 
for that specific use. But I think if you become familiarized with your own materials, I think you would benefit from that versus just completely ignoring materials. Honestly, in my opinion, as an artist, like you are a kid in a candy store. There are so many materials to use, so many things that you could play around with. A lot of the art that has come from the past has been experimentation with new materials. And nowadays, there are so many advances in paints and in different materials that I think us not playing around with them and not working with those new materials or working with the advances that have been taken on those materials is a detriment. I don't know. In my opinion, a lot of the articles that I read from artists, you are not supposed to use that. That is, oh, you're so stupid. I think you should use what it is that you want to use in order to accomplish the goal that you want to accomplish. This whole video has been more of a rant than anything else. So to answer your question, I use golden varnishes on my paintings. I will use the polyacrylic by Minwax and I will use the latex clear coat for other wooden pieces as well. A lot of people stay away from the latex because they're like, oh, well, it's latex rubber. That will only last 20 years, but it's not actually latex rubber. It is a polymer and it will last a long time. Don't worry too much about longevity, in my opinion. They're definitely going to probably last your lifetime. And as far as conservationists, not having the tools to be able to conserve those paintings in the future, they will be able to. I mean, the reason they have that tools now to conserve the paintings they have now is because those were the paintings that they're trying to conserve. If you're like worried about your art surviving the colonization of Mars or something, look, chances are it won't, no yeah. matter what you varnish it with. Yeah. We are creative individuals who take the material that is around us to create things that have never been created before. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you got something out of it. I'm not even sure what I said because I know that I went off on tangents and rants. And if you guys have any questions for us, and if you are one of the hoity-toity artists who are gonna be like, you should use rock. Either way, you can leave those questions and comments in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. I freaking adore you. I think you guys are absolutely awesome. And if you like this and you wanna watch more like this, click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Klee. Good day. Adios.